everybody. Welcome back to Poetic Philosophy, episode 100. And I figured I would wait until the new year to do my 100th episode. And it's uh, not going to be about poetry. Um, I've been listening to it particularly recently um, as I was um, watching the festivities on my local station watching the uh, the ball drop here in New York. Uh, well, I mean, I don't live in New York, but, you know, it's the closest. Um, I was listening to uh, Jordan Peterson. And actually, I listened to a lot of Jordan Peterson on that day, different things. <clears throat> I ended up in his uh, um, lecture, um, the 17th, uh, the 17th lecture series on the Bible, which is quite interesting, even though I only made it through part of the second lecture when it was about Genesis. But um, in some of his other podcasts, he was talking about questions. And he was talking about Joe Rogan and uh, uh, a lot of the other podcasters that he was actually on and how they ask good questions and while nobody has ever asked me good questions, and I'm open to questions, you know, if you want to do any questions, go over to my X feed at Podcast Bard. X is where all the most awesome poetry is, and I think I'm following a lot of good the uh, a lot of the good poets over there. Uh, it's a lot of poetry on X. Um. So I figured I would try something different. And I have four questions. And I think this is something that everybody should do. They should ask some self questions to um, know um, to fully define or, or to know, you know, what it is they know because it's through questions that we uh, come to know not just ourselves but also others questions are an awesome way to um, get to know yourself and other people and also through questioning is we increase our intelligence increase our knowledge increase our empathy and our understanding of the human condition so the four questions um, the four questions is what is soul what is God what is the monad and what is the most important action I do as a mystic poet uh, now most people can answer well uh, most people can definitely answer the first two maybe the third if you know what the monad is and if you're a poet well, maybe all of them. Anyways, so I'm going to start this with what is soul? And throughout my life as a poet, um, well, I should say through my life as a spiritual seeker because I've always like sought, uh, sought the divine, you know, because I always had the question of uh, what is God? And I'm going to be getting to that in a moment. You know, like if there's only one God, why is there so many religions and things like that? I answered those questions as I grew, but that journey has led me deeper down the path. So, what I think of soul and it's probably more in relation to the current book that I'm listening to. It's um, by Alice A. Bailey, and it's Treaties on White Magic. Um, it is her um, uh, communication with uh, Joao Cool. You know, at the writing of that, they were both alive, so it wasn't really wasn't really a channeling. It was like something other than a channeling. <clears throat> and we can connect 
with other people. But my definition probably, because uh, I've always known soul as like that higher, that higher place beyond um, the mental and definitely beyond the emotional. Because out of like the three, meaning physical, emotional, mental, um, the mental is probably the highest. But above that is the soul energy. And I do see the soul energy as the mediator between the lower selves of the physical, emotional, and mental with the higher self, which is in uh, what I tend to believe the monad. It's the mediator because when we're here in the physical um, it is hard for us to ponder on the higher knowledge, the higher mysteries. And that is where soul comes in. And soul energy can speak to us through anything because it's way above the physical in another plane of existence. Um, so that's why I can see things um, a little bit further. I can see it more, of the, more of the bigger picture. And it's also the mediator between, it, and I do believe that the soul energy, the monad is always in contact with the soul energy. And so through our spiritual development, when we learn to connect with the soul energy okay we're also connecting to our higher self not directly but through um, the soul being mediator between our lower selves and the higher self and our lower self I also believe is the shadow of the higher self the higher self is who we tr truly are the lower self is well, for most people, it's um, the body that we need to be here in this place. Um, learning and learning and gathering experience experiences, because it's a lot easier for the higher self to have an avatar on whatever planet they end up being in this seventh plane of existence. And I'm going to explain the planes in a second when I talk about what is God. <clears throat> so I think that is my, you know, what I consider soul. So when I talk about soul in my poetry and, you know, through other um, inspirations I get, you know, because see, soul can inspire us through anything it can be a movie it can be a book it can be a tv show it can be a bit of a conversation of what somebody said it could be also how a particular politician speaks soul speaks to us in all these and so much more even through nature, soul can speak to us. Meaning, and soul being the mediator to our higher self, our higher self can speak to us through that. It's like the higher self, the monad, which is probably the closest to the source, God, the creative force. Um, and is more pure than the lower self, even the soul. But the soul's, the soul energy is, it's, it's that mere connection to the higher. It's kind of like when you diving, you know, when you dive deep, you know, below the, you know, uh, where the pressures could actually, um, squeeze a human body 
and I think the human body can implode. I could be wrong on that, but you know, correct me if I am. Uh, we wear a suit and a lot and an airline. Well, <clears throat> that is what these avatars we call bodies do, and you could say that soul energy is our communication method to our higher self. So instead of radio signals, we have the soul communication with our higher self. This is my understanding. If you differ in this, we can have a discussion. Um, you can ask questions. And I will probably answer the questions on this podcast, you know, because I like this questioning thing. Because so many people, they make statements instead of just questioning themselves or others. They just accept things, you know. But that's when we get into problem with people just accepting what somebody else said because they perceive that other person as higher than themselves, um, which is total poppycock, to use an English term. I think it's an English term. Um, it's just totally crazy because when you put somebody ahead of yourself as far as gathering knowledge, you are diminishing your ability to gain that knowledge. So every time, and yeah, you can, you know, there are certain people who... Um, we see as right because we've questioned them, you know, through a process. And we can see that they're either all right, even though I don't think everyone's all right. You know, like, you know, even if they're like 50% right. I mean, you still need to question those people, but you understand where they're coming from. Because they speak truth. So that is my uh, definition of what is soul. It's a mediator between the lower self, these bodies, you know, uh, who are physical, emotional, mental, and the higher self, which I believe is a monad. Now, what is God? Everybody has their own definition on what is God, whether they're in a type of uh, religion and I include atheism as a religion because it is new age stuff that's a religion because it is all a religion is is a, um, a modem where there's common beliefs that people believe even science can be a religion um, it's just a series of beliefs. And so, I've been pondering through, I've been pondering the question, what is God, for pretty much all my life. And I kept getting pieces of information, uh, spiritual teachers I listen to, uh, books I read, even business books. Yes. It can be spiritual truth in business because, after all, money is based on energy. And spiritually, well, people can understand energy and money. If you have trouble with money, you probably have trouble with your energy. And there is some truth there, I think. So I wrote... A short little poem that I put out on X a while ago. And I paired it with a picture that I actually hand drew. Um, but that picture is an old symbol that you can find on, um, you know, pyramids and cave, you know, 
K drawings. I mean, it's like old old pictures. You can find the hieroglyphs of this particular image. And if you look on the back of your dollar bill, you see the image there. It's a pyramid with the eye on top of it. The eye meaning the all-seeing eye. And that all-seeing eye, from my perspective, is God. And another reason, too, that I believe this is that a um, uh, long time ago, I you know grew up Catholic, and I asked my father, where is God? And he said, God is everywhere. You know, that's the uh, um, omni... Uh, uh, the word's escaping me. Um, yeah, some of you know what this is. Um, so think about that. God is everywhere. That means God is in you. God is in your neighbor. God is in your enemy. God is in the house you live. The plants. God is in the earth. God is in the universe. God's everywhere. So I kept pondering on that. And I came across a symbol. And th with some other pieces of information I've also gathered from other spiritual teachers. And you can believe this or not. I'm just giving you my view. Um, that picture that I wrote with the, you know, I didn't put the all-seeing eye on top. I put the word God. And it had seven layers. First, second, third, all the way down to the bottom, seventh. Now let me explain that. I believe that we are in the seventh plane of existence. Our emotional self is in the sixth. We also call this the astral plane. And we also have a mental body, which is the fifth. And soul. I'm not sure if soul is the fourth or the third. If I were to take a guess, I, I don't know. Um, it could be fourth or third. And the other one would be a place where... All the ideas, ideas that has ever been thought of already existed on this plane. And there are still a lot of ideas up there. Even ideas from past universes that we've lived in. Um, so all the ideas that have been created, all the inventions, everything is in this plane. So I'm not sure if that is the fourth and the soul is the third or vice versa. And the, uh, the second probably would be the monad. Because um, I think the first would represent... Um, God beginning the manifestation process. And then the next plane, which some say was vibrated out of the first. You know, the, uh, the first vibrated became the second. Second vibrated became the third. The third vibrated became the fourth. The fourth vibrated became the fifth. The fifth vibrated became the seventh. And the sixth is the reflection of the seventh. So the seventh and sixth go together. Um, some, some say that. I'll leave that to you for ponder. And of course I continue to ponder on stuff myself. So the second would be the monad. And so the first would be like the uh, God beginning the process of manifestation. And this, too, I also think a lot of people ask well, how the pyramids were 
uh, created. And a lot of people have said that the pyramids were created from the top down. And I tend to lean towards that because of this process I'm describing. Because we usually repeat things. We usually repeat things. So, you know, um, why wouldn't repeat? Why wouldn't we repeat a higher principle, a higher thought? So, there's that. Um, so, we started. You know, God started the process of creation with uh, the monad. This is your original self. And then you continue working yourself down to the seventh, building up the variety of bodies you have. Soul body, mental body, emotional body, and finally the physical body. Um, again, I think we need that because we keep getting denser and each plane has, um, I feel... Um, certain properties to itself you know a lot of people who say that and this is why I disagree with uh, um, uh, um, uh, that Marvel term multiple universes you know that some people think oh, as soon as you make a decision you create another universe think about that for a few seconds just think about the map that's involved with that you know and I think the universe is a little bit more uh, simple than a multiverse I think p spiritual people who believe in the multiverse um, they, pro they probably like uh, they, pro they, they probably like the um science fiction and think science fiction think all science fiction is science fact and that is not true now science fiction can become science fact but it's usually through some type of knowledge and mathematically I don't think uh, we have proven mathematically that multiple universes exist and if and I also think too this um, seven planes of existence I think people confuse that with the multiverse so um, I th you know I, th I, I you know it takes um many bodies to create this avatar that we use to be here on this plane on this planet and I think that's mirrored on how many systems are in the body that are layered upon each other you know again as above so below as below so above so I think that also gets to the point of um, gets to the point of uh, um, I can't think of the word how it can be true you know how it can be true using all these things to make it true the third question I kind of already answered what is a monad I do believe the monad is our higher self and it's a self that is closest to God to the creative force and thus more pure the fourth question I do want to get into because the time is getting away from us what is the most important action I do as a mystic poet I had to think about this for a little bit and I'm still kind of thinking about it but I would think the main action is looking at 
other people's stories and learning from their stories. That's um, that's why I listen to a lot of YouTube. And the stuff I listen on YouTube, a lot of it is story. That's also why I love science fiction, why I love the Marvel character characters. Because of the story, because of the growth the characters go through. Um, same thing with Star Wars. Same thing with uh, the Magic Tech Chronicles, written by... Um, What's that guy's name? Oh, I like. Well, those of you who know the Magic Deck Chronicles know who it is. Um, I, I'm just drawing a blank on his name. Sorry, dude. So it's it's that listening to other people's stories, learning from their stories, and just increasing my knowledge, pondering on the things that. I see in a story, um, whether it be like a story from Hollywood or a story from YouTube. Ponder on those, ponder on those things. And that's how we've always learned. We've always learned through story. And I believe that's why books like the Bible, which is multiple stories that are put together to make one big story. I think that's why that's been the most popular. Because it's been proven that those stories, they're about basic um, psychological um, things. Whether, they're, whether they actually happen or not, the psychology behind them happens many, many, many times. Neville Goddard was one of them. Uh, Jordan Peterson, he, um, you know, just like went through his, uh, well, started to go through his uh, lecture series about the Bible. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this format for the 100th show. And, uh, Gives you a little bit more insight on what makes at least this poet tick. Why I write my poetry. You know, why I consider myself a mystic poet. Because I'm seeking to understand the divine. God. The creative force. And that's why I love creativity. And creating. And people who create awesome stuff on YouTube, yeah, watch that stuff too. You know, like Prism, he, like, using the same characters, he rewrote the sequel, 7, 8, and 9, which is a lot better than what Disney could come up with. Because Disney didn't really respect the characters. They just had an agenda. They didn't let the characters tell a story. They just wanted to tell their agenda. So anyways, I thank you for listening. I hope you all stay creative in the magic of life. And if you have questions, I will be posting this on X and on iHeart. And I believe I'm also posting on Spotify. Um, so if you see myself out there. I'm not on Spotify. I'm mostly on X. So if you want to ask me any questions, you'll have to go to my um, feed at Podcast Bard and find this post and ask questions. I think there's also another way to ask questions through that. I don't know if they still do direct messages. But, you know, there's a few a few things they did to, like, ask questions. So I'll be looking at all those. Particularly ask a question where um, this post appears on X. Thank you for listening. Stay creative in the magic of life. And I hope this new year is awesome for everyone. As the Vulcans would say, also, live long and prosper. 
Thank you for listening. Have a good day.